Hello everybody. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful holiday season with your loved ones. Been doing a lot of things, a lot of thinking here with regards to the topic, what we will be talking about today. And today's topic is about the best, the number one power amplifier that I have ever owned. Okay guys, the time has come for me to talk about the number one power amplifier that I have ever owned. This amplifier happens to be the 343rd power amplifier that I have owned over the last six years, I think it is now. Going as far back as 2015, my first amplifier was the Rotel 5 channel 10.95 and uh, that was my beginning from there I began little by little to move ahead and to discover many different types of amplification every brand you can think of I probably have owned it but I gotta I gotta be honest here I haven't owned everything so when I mention the power amplifier that I believe is my best amplifier ever, I am only going by what I have had here. I can't talk about those brands, those models that I have not owned. So I got to make sure I say that. Let me give you a little context as to why I believe this is the best power amplifier I have owned. I'm a believer that a well-designed power amplifier needs to be extremely extremely neutral it needs to be that amplifier that colors the sound the least now many of the power amplifiers that i have owned many of them color the sound one way or the other some more than others but for the most part i believe most designers most amplifier designers have some sort of an some sort of an intention if you will as to what they want the amplifier to do some designers want better mids, better bass, less sound stage, big sound stage, smoother, warmer, fuller sounding, you name it. So there is always an element of a tune, if you will, coming from the designer himself or herself. This amplifier that I have here, in my opinion, has the least amount of coloration. I'm a believer that an amplifier needs to be able to have speed. Shouldn't be a sluggish amplifier. I have owned many, many, many slow sounding amplifiers. Typically, these tend to be the sweet camp, as I call it, which tend to be amplifiers that love to embellish the presentation to make it prettier, to basically create beautification of the presentation, making every single song sound gorgeous. Okay, these amplifiers tend to be the ones that are a little slower paced. Nothing wrong with that. Right? When I think of the perfect amplifier, right, typically this is going to be a cost no object amplifier. Now, reasons why this amplifier, in my opinion, wins over every amplifier I've owned. Number one, this amplifier, I want to make sure I say this, this is not an amplifier that is here to distract you to fool you, to make your sound be what it isn't. This is an amplifier that will make you pay attention to what's happening. Think of it as you having to pass a very important exam and you have to open up a book and you need to read the entire book from beginning to end. And now you have to be very focused and very concentrated and you have to really, really pay attention to what you're reading right. This is exactly what this amplifier does. It makes you pay attention to what's being presented. It isn't going to take you on a Disney trip, for lack of a better word, and, and, and distract you with what 
you know, with fanciness and things that are not real. But it's really a an honest approach to sound reproduction. It does not fool you. It doesn't lie to you. It will never ever tell you that you have a kick-ass system when in reality you do not. This amplifier also talks to you about even the cabling that you're using. Perfect example, I have been using some Nordos cabling. And for the first time I'm able to say this in front of the camera, Nordost cabling tends to project the high frequency very, very f into the room. They are very focused in making the sound clear. But based on my findings with this amplifier, I have realized that Nordos really is about extreme resolution, extreme clarity, and what that ends up doing in the long haul is rob a lot of the real musicality, the real soul of the presentation. Silver cables specifically tend to just make things, I hate to say it guys, but I gotta say it, somewhat unnatural to me. I found that high resolution when it comes to amplifier, highly resolving pre-amplifier, highly resolving speakers. Now you add even cables that are highly resolving. Guys, what is the end result going to be? Too much of a good thing. Number two, a power amplifier has to have absolutely no fear of pushing through complex passages. That's one of the things that I have noticed about, that I did notice about the last affordable Class D amplifier that I had on my channel, the Italian brand. One of the biggest criticisms I had with that amplifier was the fact that I did feel it wasn't able to really push through the complexity of some songs, not feeling overwhelmed to be able to decode all this information to be able to unpack every single bit of information and present it in a very clear and articulate way. I feel that the Class D amplifier simply couldn't do that. Number three, another great thing that a power amplifier must have is the ability to get out of the way. You have to remember this is one of the biggest and most crucial things to remember. The amplifier has to add the least amount of coloration possible. Because if you have an amplifier that colors the presentation, essentially what you're doing is adding ketchup to the food. You're not really inhaling or tasting the reality of the music. You aren't. Okay, so it is important that the power amplifier completely takes itself out of the music. And that's a very difficult thing to do, I must say. Having owned a lot of power amplifiers, I got to tell you, many of them are still have some sort of a sound signature, guys. They still do. But this one that I am talking about today had, in my opinion, the least, even less even less guys than the boulder 2150 monos that i had here number four another great thing that a well-designed power amplifier should have is control bass control this power amplifier here controls the speakers in a way that never ceases to amaze me it just feels mind-boggling when i hear the brutality of the bass, the thrust, the power, the density of the presentation. That's one thing I must make sure I emphasize. The density of the presentation, the, the bass that comes out of this power amplifier is, is, is next level. Um, this is the power amplifier that if you bring into your room and you still have no bass, guys, I hate to break it to you, your room sucks, your speakers suck, your cable sucks. Something else in your system sucks. I can assure you it's not the power amplifier. This is the best bass I have ever heard from any power amplifier. Any power amplifier, period. 
no power amplifier that I have ever owned has had the brutal assault with regards to bass control that this amplifier has. There is no speaker, in my opinion, that this power amplifier cannot handle, cannot control. Wilson, Magical, Magnapan, whatever you throw at it, it just laughs. Okay, it really does. With 1,600 watts of pure Class A into one ohm and stable all the way down to a quarter of an ohm, the best power amplifier I have ever owned is the Griffin Mephisto Solo. At $122,000, 1 million microfarads of capacitance, overbuilt, huge. Just to give you an idea, here is my hand on top of the chassis of this monster. I can't even lift it. It's impossible for it's impossible for me to lift it. It really seems to be the power amplifier that you have to put in place and not move for a long time. I can assure you guys that this power amplifier right now, guys, has the number one spot. And of course, that means it has defeated every other amplifier that you have seen on my channel it has basically distanced itself now guys this amplifier was designed in 2012 guys think about that over 10 years ago and it's still still taking down names it's still murdering amplifiers that are being built today expensive amplifiers i must add i mean this is the amplifier that in my opinion has no excuses for you you have to come in ready to work accommodated by the proper cabling the proper speakers and it will pay you dividends when you do that but you can't take any shortcuts here guys it will find them you can't lie to it there is no magic there's no tricks you can pull on this amplifier unfortunately i don't recommend this power amplifier for those of you who are amateurs who, those of you who have systems that are not completely developed from top to bottom systems that are just in in the beginning stages that's the best word uh, that i can use this amplifier does not want to be the it's not going to fix your issues it is not going to enhance what you have what it's going to do is tell you the current state of your system it's going to come in, and if you have great electronics, it's going to show. It's going to showcase just that. If you have great speakers, it's going to showcase just that. If you play poor recordings, it's going to tell you you play crappy, bad recordings. I couldn't see this amplifier in a system that has poor speakers, poor a poor source, bad cables. It's just not that amplifier, guys. It's not for that. It's going to call you out on that. If you have a crappy power cord, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear the cheap cabling, the cheap cables inside the power cords. It is going to sound bright. It is going to tell you that you have essentially poor copper somewhere in the mix. I am still trying to massage it into my system. I am buying usb cables i am buying i have two sets of speaker cables as you know i have transparent and i have also shunyata i also have another line of cables that i have not talked about yet which i will be disclosing on a future video i am still working it i don't have stands for it i need to get the stands they are on their way here so in case you're wondering they're on the floor right now, but the stands will be here hopefully in the next seven days. And this is the kind of Herculean effort you need to do. With a power amplifier like this, you just have to. If you can't, go elsewhere. Continue doing what you do with other brand names, other lesser amplification. This is ready for you. The question is, this is an amplifier that comes ready for you. Now the question is, are you ready for it? 
and I am I am going to say many people are not ready for a level of amplification like the Griffin Mephisto solos. The Griffin Mephisto solos to me simply are as good as it gets. Ten year old design, still amazing today. Going forward, you guys will be hearing my Griffin Mephisto solos. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. And stay tuned for more. Peace.